By now, many of you have probably either read or at least heard about the article published last week in the Wall Street Journal under the heading, Why Chinese Mothers Are Superior. And if you have read it, I'm sure you can't imagine that I would remain silent about it. For those of you who haven't read the article, let me summarize the author's view here. But I do suggest that you read it for yourself because I can't possibly do justice to the horror of it in a summary. The author begins with the assertion that it is widely known that Chinese parents produce children who are successful. And she then declares herself an authority on the question of why this is because she was raised by Chinese parents and has gone on to raise successful children herself. Here are some things that she says her children were never allowed to do. Attend a sleepover or have a playdate. Watch TV or play computer games. Play anything other than the violin or piano or not play the violin or piano. Be in a school play or complain about not being in a school play. Be less than number one in any subject other than gym or drama and choose their own extracurricular activities. Now, if you haven't read the article, I'm sure your reaction is the same as the one I received from my colleagues, my friends, even my own daughters when I read this to them. It's a parody, right? She's presenting these parents as some sort of caricatured extreme, but it's not a parody. She means it, and it gets worse throughout the article. On her view, what makes the Chinese mother successful is that she's not soft and weak like Western parents. She does not respect the child's individuality, encourage him to pursue his own passions, support his choices, provide him with a nurturing environment. And again, these are all her own words. She dictates what he does. She defines the standards. She demands perfection. And then she forces practice cows him into compliance, and belittles him for failure. If she thinks he's pudgy, she should call him fatty. If his grades are under par, she should tell him he's worthless and stupid and lazy. If he's disrespectful, she should say, like her father did to her, and like she went on to repeat to her own daughter, that he is garbage. This, she says, is what produces a child who is successful. The question that should be screaming in your mind, the most important question to ask, is what is successful? The first of many thoroughly disgusting aspects of this article is that it takes a sloppy, superficial, unexamined, image-driven view of success, one popular among the kinds of soul-crushing parents she describes, as the given. And then she argues that they are the ones who produce children who achieve this sort of success. Well, yes. If you define success as proficiency at the violin and piano, having straight A's, and being the sort of person who doesn't stoop to watching TV, playing sports, or having sleepovers, then indeed, the parent who forces the child to play piano or violin, drills him until he gets A's, and forbids him from playing sports, watching TV, or having sleepovers, is successful. But what has that proven? I personally, as a parent and an educator, subscribe to a very different understanding of success. And because I don't accept such an unthinking, shallow, and conventional definition, I'm not going to propose to give a full explanation of my own view here. If you want a better understanding of my view and that of my colleagues here at Van Dam Academy, you can go and watch my other video blogs. But I will say one crucially important thing. I believe that parents and teachers should dismiss out of hand any view of success that does not focus crucially and fundamentally on the child's personal happiness, on the achievement of goals that are important to him, on a satisfaction that comes from inside, on a joy in his daily existence. Any formula for success that fails to place his happiness at the core should be soundly rejected. If we agree that the child's life belongs ultimately to him and that his goal should be the achievement of a deep and abiding personal fulfillment, then it is only by the standard of the development of positive, life-affirming, deep personal values and of the development of the virtues he needs to achieve them that we can call him successful. 
This author's view of success, by contrast, is a recipe for external achievement and internal emptiness, for earning honors and accolades and having an utter lack of genuine self-esteem for being mindlessly, robotically, dutifully goal-driven and having no sincere and creative independent ambition, for appearing successful and for being miserable. And any quote, success without happiness is not success at all. There's a lot more to say about this article and I've decided to do so by creating a whole series of video blogs. You might ask why I want to give it that much attention. The first reason is that in my mind, it would be no different if the Wall Street Journal had published an article justifying the physical abuse of children. To deny a child all choices, to withhold affection and approval in the face of anything less than perfection, to excoriate and belittle him for failing to meet your own unreasonable standards is abuse. That there is a Yale law professor who holds this view is disgusting. But, it is, but the truly disgusting thing is that her ideas were published in a forum that lends them credence. I think the editors of the Wall Street Journal should be thoroughly ashamed of themselves. Second, however extreme her particular methods, this approach to parenting in a subtler and more insidious form is already rampant in our culture. I know many people who raise their children to feel that they will be loved for their achievements. And that achievement means jumping through their hoops, getting good grades, being the best, going to an Ivy League school, becoming a doctor or a lawyer. And I've seen the psychological toll that this approach exacts. Such people can end up crippled by conflict between their own desires and passions and interests and the standard of success that has been beaten into them throughout their lives. And that is tragic. Finally, this article emphasizes a false dichotomy that I feel it is my goal in life to fight. That is the reason for the existence of Van Damme Academy. And that is the dichotomy between success and individuality, or success and personal passion, or success and happiness. And it is on that topic that I will talk more next time.